let's take a look at how the tiger became the tiger shark. Before we get started, if you haven't already, go ahead and check out parts 1 and 2 of this series, which covers the development of the F-5 Freedom Fighter and then the Tiger, the predecessor to the F-20 Tiger Shark. What began as Northrop's F-5G and eventually became known as the F-20 Tiger Shark was a light fighter with advanced avionics which was easier to maintain and much less expensive to procure and operate than its chief rival, the General Dynamics F-16. The F-20 could carry beyond visual range missiles as well as air-to-ground missiles and bombs, giving it the capability to fire or deploy most weapons in the U.S. arsenal. Easy to fly, inexpensive to operate, a very capable aircraft with a powerful engine. Yet, only three were ever built and the program was cancelled. Some have called the Tiger Shark the greatest fighter never made. Why did this happen? Let's start by taking a look at some of the F-20 specifications. With the success of the F-5E Tiger II, Northrop sought to further continue developing the F-5 platform. Initially tagged as the F-5G and intended to continue the F-5's legacy as an inexpensive export fighter, the F-5G was born out of a requirement by the Taiwanese Air Force to produce an F-5 capable of deploying the Beyond Visual Range or BVR AIM-7 Sparrow. At the time, Taiwan was concerned with the growing capabilities of Chinese fighters. However, the Carter administration was worried that advanced avionics could fall into Soviet hands and prohibited the export of high-tech fighters to other nations. Since Taiwan was already producing the F-5E locally under license, the Defense Department asked Northrop to study adding the AIM-7 to the F-5 platform. The F-5G was developed and appeared to fit within current export restrictions of the time. but. President Carter personally blocked the sale to Taiwan. This would be the first of many what could have been for the F-5G and eventually the F-20. Meanwhile, it was becoming apparent that restricting the export sales of advanced fighters was actually harming the US and her allies, as the Soviet Union was continuing to export sophisticated fighters to Soviet bloc nations. In fact, Towards the end of the Carter administration in 1979, experts argued that allies were purchasing other weapons platforms to upgrade their air forces with aircraft like the Dassault Mirage 2000. The FX program was initiated to allow for a low-cost fighter, and while the F-5G fit this bill, General Dynamics submitted the F-1679, which had a less powerful but proven J-79 engine in it as compared to the standard USAF F-16s. The two FX fighters were closely matched, but sales of F-5Gs were still prohibited to Taiwan, which led the Taiwanese Air Force to begin developing their own fighter, the F-CK-1 Ching Kuo, also known as the Indigenous Defense Fighter or IDF. While both the entries into the FX program, the F-5G and the F-1679, did not see production, upcoming political events would dictate that the F-5G would need some serious upgrades. In 1980, Ronald Reagan was elected president, and along with dramatically increasing defense spending and programs, he also began to relax the export restrictions on fighters. At first, this seemed like a boom for the F-5G. However, General Dynamics soon developed an export version of the F-16A, which had a more powerful engine and better avionics than the current F-5G. Sales of F-16s to Pakistan prompted Northrop to upgrade the F-5G to better compete with the F-16. 
The upgraded fighter would use the GE 404 engine, the same engine used in the F-18 Hornet, which happens to be another Northrop design that evolved from the F-5. The single GE 404 engine develops 60% more thrust than the two J-85 engines found in the previous versions of the F-5. In addition to the upgraded and more powerful engine, the new fighter would utilize composite materials and a slightly redesigned wing. A new fly-by-wire system was installed and sensors were upgraded. In 1982, this new fighter would be designated the F-20, and soon after the nickname Tiger Shark would be assigned. Northrop had an all-new fighter. Just like the F-5, the F-20 carries two internal 20mm cannons in the nose and is also capable of carrying a 30mm cannon in an external pod which uses the same ammunition found in the A-10's Avenger cannon. The five external hardpoints are capable of carrying 8,000 pounds of ordnance. For ground attack missions, all manner of freefall bombs, cluster bombs, rocket pods, and AGM-65 Maverick missiles can be equipped. For air-to-air -air missions, two wing-tipped AIM-9 Sidewinders can be used along with up to four AIM-7 Sparrows or AIM-120 AMRAMs. The F-20 was equipped with a General Electric AN-APG-67 multi-mode radar which offered a wide range of air-to-air -air and air-to-ground modes. The nose of the F-20 is relatively small, and the designers had to work with these space limitations. Yet somehow they were able to get everything to fit inside an area measuring less than 1.9 cubic feet. Additionally, two multifunction displays were placed near the top of the instrument panel and the integrated data bus allowed sensor data to be sent to other aircraft using a data link. One more note about the F-20 sensors. While the F-20 could equip and fire the medium range AIM-7 or AIM-120 AMRAM, the F-16 couldn't fire them until 1989, well after the F-20's development. The promotion of the F-20 was unique for its time. Basically, Northrop had to reduce its own promotional materials and demo flights since there were few government funds invested in the program. The messaging centered around the low cost of operating the jet, its quick deployment capability from sitting on the ramp to being in the air within minutes, and Northrop even went as far as to hire famed General Chuck Yeager to endorse the jet. Let's take a look at his sales pitch. Forty years ago, I shot down my first fighter using a ring and bead gun sight in a P-51. Now the air combat arena of today is so lethal that if you're not flying a fighter with current technology, chances are you'll never see the guy that shoots you down. In the old days, we wasted a lot of time trying to maneuver around on the tail of an airplane to use your gun or get into the envelope of the old missile systems but the object today is to strap your fanny to a 9G fighter with an engine you don't have to worry about and with an advanced avionics system that gives you the capability of managing all of your weapon systems without even looking in the cockpit or taking your hands off the stick and throttle. The object today is to aim and shoot and the guy that does that first wins. If you don't, you lose, it's that simple. Despite this endorsement by General Chuck Yeager and an aggressive marketing and demonstration campaign, the F-20 could not find customers. Why was this? For starters, the relaxing of export restrictions was a double-edged sword. The F-20 found itself competing with the already deeply into production F-16, and as such the F-20's per unit cost was not that much less than the F-16. Additionally, the USAF was deeply committed to the F-16 and the Navy was even developing an aggressive version of the F-16 known as the F-16N. And remember that aggressive demonstration campaign? Two F-20s crashed as a result. One occurred while performing a demo flight in South Korea and the other in Canada while practicing for a demo flight at the Paris Air Show. Both crashes appeared to be a result of the airframe being able to withstand more G-forces than the highly experienced pilots could handle, 
and were not due to any failures of the airframe. However, between the USAF and Navy passing on the F-20 along with the crashes, potential buyers shied away from the program. After spending over a billion dollars and obtaining no sales in 1986, Northrop canceled the project. It's amazing to think that a fighter with the fastest scramble time in the world, which used 53% less fuel, cost 63% less to maintain, and was four times more reliable than any of its contemporaries, was not adopted by any Air Force. Many have argued that the F-20 was the finest fighter that never went into production. The irony is that today the F-20 program makes more sense than it did back in the 80s. Miniaturization in electronics allows even the most powerful AESA radars to fit in the F-20's nose. Smart weapons have also gotten smaller and more accurate, meaning that one fighter can do what would have taken two or even four fighters to do 30 years ago. And with many nations still flying F-5Es as their fighters, an F-20 would be a welcome upgrade. The concept, and some say even the design of the F-20 was copied in the JF-17. And as they say, imitation is the most sincere form of flattering, possibly demonstrating that there would be a market for an F-20 if it were released today. What do you think? Was the F-20 a missed opportunity? Would you like to see Northrop's promo video in its entirety? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and see you next time.